Now to the White House, where the president is set to sign an executive order on health care this morning. He says it will give some consumers more choice and lower premiums. Critics argue it will undermine the protections of the Affordable Care Act. Also this morning, the president will nominate his new secretary for Homeland Security. That seat was vacated when John Kelly became White House chief of staff, and now Kelly's deputy, Kirsten Nielsen, will fill the post. And President Trump is escalating his war with the media as he pushes his tax plan. Our chief White House correspondent, John Carl, has all the latest. Good morning, John. Good morning, George. The president has said his tax plan is a middle class miracle, and now he is taking that message to those that he claims will benefit the most. In Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, Wednesday, President Trump told supporters he's happy with his life in the White House. I had a very good life, but you know what? I'm having a better life now, and I'm helping a lot of people. The president says his tax plan will help the middle class. So many people have come up to me and say, give it to the middle class. Give it to people that need it. Give it to people that want to spend it. He offered no new details on the plan, which will cut taxes for most Americans, including what will likely be a big break for some of the wealthiest Americans. And remember, Remember, you'll do your tax on a single piece of paper. H&R Block will not like Donald Trump very much. The president claimed his plan would mean a $4,000 windfall for the typical American family. But his top economic advisor has said he could not guarantee that no middle class American families would pay more under the administration's plan. Meanwhile, the president is escalating his war on the news media, overnight threatening again to try to take away broadcast licenses from TV networks, tweeting, network news has become so partisan, distorted and fake that licenses must be challenged and if appropriate, revoked, not fair to the public. This after the president seemed to question the freedom of reporters to write their stories. And it's frankly disgusting the way the press is able to write whatever they want to write. And people should look into it. Those words have drawn a rebuke from Republican Senator Ben Sass, who overnight put out a statement saying, Mr. President, are you recanting the oath you took on January 20th to preserve, protect and defend the First Amendment? Also, George, on this question of revoking broadcast uh, licenses for the networks, uh, the networks, the national networks that he is feuding with actually don't have broadcast licenses. Those are granted to the individual stations. So we had a statement overnight from one of the FCC commissioners, a Democrat. She tweeted to the president, not how it works, and then added, freedom of press is a cornerstone of our democracy. Hope my FCC colleagues can all be on yeah. the same page with respect to the First Amendment. Yeah, this threat to this threat to TV networks is a favorite tool of strongmen everywhere. But in this case from the president, it's really an empty threat. It's an empty threat. He does not have the power to do this, George. Uh, and the only thing is if the FCC theoretically went after each and every uh, local station across the country, uh, nobody thinks that's actually going to happen. The president does have the power to decertify this Iran nuclear deal. He's briefed Congress on it, expected to announce this tomorrow. Uh, that's right, George, and all indications are uh, that the president will not certify that Iran is in compliance with the deal. But an important distinction here, that does not mean that the United States is dropping out of the deal. What that means is it goes to Congress to decide what to do and whether or not to reimpose the sanctions that were dropped. Of course, George, Iran already got much of the economic benefit from the United States at the beginning of this deal. So dropping out of it now doesn't actually uh, you know, do much at this point. Okay, John Carl, thanks very much. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.